and uh, get it on the test stand. I just put the uh, chime wheels back in and uh, I'm going to hook the little springs back up. Let's see if I can. Two, three, four on the strike, and then we'll put the uh, transmission gear in. I call these transmission gears. That's what it was in the in the book, original book that I had for this. Okay, now you don't want to tighten this one down because you're going to set the timing on the opposite side. So, for the time being. We'll just go ahead and friction it on there just a little bit. Now let's go ahead and Set the escapement pellet forks. Ooh, that's bad. Pellet fork comes from the inside. Okay. Before I do that, see if I can get this a better shot. Okay. Here's the escape wheel. All it does is uh, when the cables put pressure on this, the load, this allows a certain amount of energy to be released each time that the tooth comes and catches the uh, escape or the pellet fork. And these have to be set, the, the, these have to be set so that the uh, Tooth engages, pushes up on the uh, the fork, releases a, a, a tiny little bit of energy through the weights, and uh, continues the uh, oscillation the of the pendulum, and that all s sets up with uh, moving the pendulum weight up or down to to speed up or slow down the clock, and uh, these are kind of crucial. They have to be exactly right on the uh, escape wheel or she'll fail. To run properly, and uh, so the the thing that I do do is that I like to oil every other tooth on the escape wheel, 
and uh, I don't. It's a, it's a good practice to get into. Now, they, a lot of controversy if they use little one dip oilers or if they use uh, these big oilers. Uh, a lot of people don't like them. I do. Don't have any problem with them. Uh, if I get a little too too much oil on there, I just use a little swab and remove the oil. It's just all you have to. If you see the oil on the escape wheel, you got too much. It's just a little dab. So and I don't suppose I can show that, but okay, we got one, two. And we're back to the beginning. Now I'm just going to swab around the outside edge just to be sure that I didn't get too much on there. And the escape wheel's oiled. So we'll put this back in. There isn't very much adjustment you can make on these. very well. Try it again. <clears throat> when you want it to go perfect it won't. Good belly.
Okay, I'm checking to look at the uh, pellets on the pellet fork to make sure they're going to clear. And they will. The edge of that pellet has a bevel on it, and that's what releases and gives it the oscillation, the power back and forth. So the gear, the, the, the fork, or the uh, tooth on the gear has to come up, draw up, and then come back down, and then there's an angle, and it comes off of that angle. That's what gives it the energy, and it releases just a tiny little bit of energy, enough to get the, the pendulum to, to swing. So now we'll set the timing on this side. Okay, once again, uh, a little controversy on where you want to oil them, but I oil them. I, this is a high uh, Wheeler's Oil Delight, and it's uh, highly uh, synthetic. It doesn't gum up. So I'm going to put a little there. Put a little on the uh, for the snail here, and we'll see what else we need to, to oil. Alright, we'll put the clutch back in. Okay, this spring goes under this lever, and then you want to have just a, so you just pull it up. And you want just enough tension. That's, that's too much. So we'll back that off until I get it just right. Alright, now we can put the rack back on. Okay, that spring gives a little tension on this leverage so that it snaps back down after it lets the warning gear go. Alright, now to set the rack here, we're going to get a handout. And what I want to do is I want this lever to drop right in the middle on the snail. So we're going to take this around. Okay, you see where it dropped? That's, that's not in the right position. So we'll take this off and we'll lift this up just a little bit. And you see where it's set now in about the middle? That that as a as a rule that will get you pretty close although I've had a couple of them that it didn't work you had to move it one tooth or back or forward to get it to work but that should that should do it now we'll check it again these are your counts this is this is your first chime second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth eleventh and twelfth all the way down now We've got to get this lever down in for a little bit. And we're right in the middle. Okay.
three clips. And that one's locked. That one's locked. Probably should have done this one first. Yeah, <laughs> the easiest one to go. Right, I don't want that sticking at all. Now, we got to set these two cams, which is your timing, and uh, we'll set the uh, strike cam. So let me get that figured out and we'll come back and show you how I do it. When you set the timing, where I generally set the, the guard pin on the fourth uh, train gear on the chime side, is there's a pin right here. I don't know. Can you? How my fingers are in the way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here. The pin is right where am I pointing. And I want that pin slightly to the right. Just almost in line with the uh, leaf gear here on the uh, butterfly. So we're going to just gently touch the gear so I, that doesn't move. So we know where that pin's at. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to come back here and loosen the uh, strike gear, the chime gear, I'm sorry. Okay, it's just loose. Now we're going to run the hammer. So let's go with how to do this. What we're doing is we rebuilt the clock and we're just going to set the timing up here, this mechanism right here and this mechanism right here. <clears throat> In order to send the, set the timing, how I do it is I friction this on but not tight enough so that I can't turn it. Next thing I do is inside here is a guard pin on the fourth wheel. It's right there. There's a guard pin sitting right there. Okay, that guard pin you want to come right about here. So it's coming up on the on the uh, just bypasses your top dead center. Okay, and you uh, take this cam here which is loose and you hold your gear so it don't move. Alright, and you set that so now we got this, and we got this cam, which is just exactly right, so we'll leave it alone. So we're going to put our finger right here, and we're going to hold this gently. And we're going to tighten that cam up. Okay, now we got this cam set. Now this one's loose, so what we're going to do here is... Uh, move it to the second slot okay so now here's your first slot and it's moved across to this one which means that these should have dropped four hammers in a row one two three four so we have the, the back gear loose so let's take the uh, the cogwheel here and two three four okay now we got that one straight so We'll go ahead and tighten this one up and we'll want to go down here 
once again hold the gear so it don't move. And tighten that up. Okay. The timing should be set. And so sometimes it don't work, but we'll check to be sure. So we're going to lift this up. Well, let's just do it with the uh, minute hand. Okay. Now we should have two, two, uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, that struck four. So that's the second chime. So we had the quarter done. Now they're on the half, which would be correct. So let's go to the half. See if we got this right. So now we should get one, two, three, four. There's the first one. Two, three, four. There's the second one. One, two, three, four. In a row is a three quarter chime. So we know that that's right. So now we can go on ahead and okay now what's what's happened is we're going to check the advancement make sure that it corrects itself which this this clock has auto correct. So it didn't strike there. Alright it's going to strike here. So we're going to move this minute hand up to the top and everything should be set now for the clock. There's your, there's your uh, strike going to go next. And then here's your strike. And that should be about 11. There you go. Now your clock's completely set, everything's nice and tight, and everything's put in the right direction there, so all of your uh, timing mechanism is, should be correct. So we can put this on the test stand now, and uh, see how well she runs. So with that, I'll let you go, and I'll get back to you in a little bit. We're on my test stand. Now this isn't the, the most ideal test stand, believe me. But uh, don't have enough room right now. But you see how uh, it can handle the large uh, Kaniger units and the small Hermel units. And uh, we use this to test uh, the clocks with. And I usually run them about three or four days, make sure everything's going on. This clock now is done, and uh, you're seeing it for the first time as I am. So we'll look at the hammers, and we'll go ahead and run this down to the first one. One, two, three, four. So there's your quarter hour. We've got the hand set at quarter. There's a second round. So that's a half hour. Okay, we'll run it to the third. And I got about less than a minute left on recording, so I'm going to have to hurry. Anyway, it all works so far. All right. And there's our fourth. So, we'll run this for a few days. I gotta tweak the hammers just a little bit, but otherwise, otherwise, it looks like it's gonna run just fine. And this one can go back to the customer. Thanks for watching.